Oh, my lords and ladies, dear patrons, I am Lord Blooddraw, and you have come home to the Cathode Zone, where each week we will explore the shadowy depths of old-time TV. <laughs> and tonight, our old friend, science fiction Swiss Army Knife, Radiation, makes an appearance. <laughs> Now, as we know, radiation can make people and animals grow, shrink, and mutate in any number of fun, fascinating, and terrifying ways. And in tonight's tale, it wreaks havoc on the bug population of a deserted island. Deserted other than the three castaways who wash up on its shores, of course. <laughs> From the dim, distant year of 1953 comes the creepy tale... The Spider's Web, from Tales of Tomorrow. Tales of Tomorrow. What strange effects does radiation have upon Earth's creatures? Tonight, Tales of Tomorrow presents The Spider's Web, starring Nancy Coleman and Henry Jones with Don Hamner. Take all, take all you want to now. Gene, we made it. We made it. Look, it's jungle. Man, take it easy now. Take it easy. Where's my husband, Matt? He's in there somewhere. Why didn't he wake us up? Why? Why didn't he let us know? You figure it out. You're married to him. Oh, Jean, now that we're saved, tell me the truth. When the yacht blew up, I was knocked unconscious. Who put me in this boat? I did. Yes. I knew it. What, a, what about him? Did he... What about the others? Did he, did he try to help the others? It was dark, Matt. We... Couldn't see anything. Yeah. of these small islands in this part of the Pacific. I'll be plenty of food in that jungle. Water. Think anyone will ever find it? Maybe. Right now, I don't care. 
Matt. What? Don't fight with him, Matt. Well, you're up, I see. What you wander off to, Crawford? Oh, here and there, just sort of wandering around. Uh, breakfast? Oh. Why you wake us up when we hit the beach? While you were sleeping so peacefully, it seemed pity to disturb you. Oh, and will you stop? Now, what did I say, dear? Just a second now, Crawford. I'm pulling out there now for ten days. By some miracle, we made a landfall. But it'll be a long time before anybody finds us. Whether you like it or not, if you are, try to get along. Well, certainly, Radigan. Get along. That's the ticket. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? What do you think that is, Radigan? How do I know? You're the bug expert. The only reason I ask is because for the first time in my life, believe it or not, I'm stumped. I haven't the slightest idea what it is. It looks like an ant. Well, it's very perceptive, dear. <laughs> Except it's much too large. As a matter of fact, it could possibly be... be what? A mutation. What's that? Well, it's an hereditary variation. It happens sometime when the genes are affected by some outside force, like, oh, atomic radiation. A long way from the Keeney, Crawford. Well, that's a fact. It's ironic, isn't it? I spent thousands of dollars combing the Pacific. And now, quite by accident, I seem to have stumbled on an island that may well prove to be an entomologist's paradise. They're the cyber worker to make camp. Why can't we stay here? We swamped and tried to... Oh, I've got a perfect spot. Just about 50 yards into the jungle. Any water? Yes, plenty, and lots of fruit trees, Wait. too. Let's go. Which way? Right through there. Oh, uh, dear. If we get out of this alive, do you still intend to go through with your plan? If you mean, do I still intend to divorce you? Yes. If there was ever any doubt in my mind that night in the water after the accident, we moved it. You're an incorrigible sentimentalist, Jean. The first law of life is survival. You coming? Your friend's calling you. Talking about. Well, I could have sworn we were headed in the right direction. Look back. K-Rat. The army was here. Well, maybe my theory of mutation isn't so far fetched after all. Restricted area. Keep out. Atomic refuse buried beyond this point. What does that mean? It means the ground under this island contains radioactive material. It's dangerous. Oh, I wouldn't think so, not after seven years. What worries me is what insect mutations may have developed in all that time. The island may be full of these things. Or worse. Let's go back to the beach. We can't have tides coming Please, in. Please, Matt, we could stay in the boat. Well, all right. Let's get going. You coming? Of course. <laughs> Should hit that beach an hour ago. Are we lost, Matt? Looks like it. For a sailor, you don't have a very good sense of direction, do you, Radigan? If you just followed my orders. Yours? We're not in your yacht now. We're not in the middle of the jungle. If I get any orders, it'll be me. By what right? By this right. Stop it, Matt. We make camp here. There. In the hole for the fire, Crawford. What is it? 
I don't know. It looks like an egg sack. An animal? Animal. Those eggs belong to an insect. We've got to get out of here. It's getting dark. We can't be wandering around in circles all night long. You understand we've got to get away from here. Whatever animal those eggs belong to will be coming back here. Maybe you're right. Let's go. Sticky, all right. Listen. Oh, that's impossible. Could it possibly be. Symmetrical? That has drag lines, ridge lines. Trap lines. But those strands are normally one millionth of an inch thick. Strands of what? A spider's web. can't be good. You know what they say, big web, big spider. At least, you know, that's what I say. <laughs> anyway, our amoral arachnid expert is being played by Henry Jones, familiar that guy actor who appeared in many, many TV shows, too many to name. But I will mention he had a recurring role in the 1960s show Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Jones played the time-controlling rogue Mr. Pym, who took on Admiral Nelson and the crew of the Sea View in two episodes. <laughs> well, let's see if he has the guts to take on this giant spider as we go on to part two of The Spider's Web from Tales of Tomorrow. Now let's return to the second act of The Spider's Web, starring Nancy Coleman and Henry Jones. Revine is the strand of a, of a web. It's the web of a mammoth spider. Oh, okay. Take it easy. Take it easy. Crawford. You know about these things. How how big would you say that bug is? The eggs of a normal spider are measured in millimeters. The web is generally referred to as being gossamer. That'll give you an idea. As big as I am? At least. Let's get out of here. Now, wait a minute. Listen to me, both of you. The sun's going down fast. In a short time, it'll be pitch black. Now, if we leave this place, we might be stuck in that mess all night. Are you suggesting we stay here? No, Matt, please. what I mean. What you say about these mutations is true. It seems that it is. Well, how do we know what might be waiting for us out there in the dark? I'll take my chance. Dad, we can't stay oh, Don't you see what I'm driving at? Why, if we go out there, meet up with one of those things, well, we can't put up a fight. Those trees are so close together, we couldn't do anything. But in this spot, it's clear. We can move around. We can make a reception for that thing if it shows up. And will. Well, we'll be waiting for it. With that thing? Do you realize, Reddick, how fast they move? And even if you hit it, I doubt you can stop it. Doesn't have nine lives, does it? Besides, I've got another idea that may, may save us some bullets. That's the only thing to do. Now, here we know what to expect. Out there, we don't. Now, what do you say? It's settled. It's not settled. Oh. Please stay here. doesn't. This will. Here, uh, help me with these ropes. Yeah. 
Step into my parlor, huh? Question is, who's? Perfectly obvious you two haven't the slightest idea what the spiders are like. <laughs> Maybe I ought to tell you. You can magnify everything I tell you just about 1,000 times. It has beautiful scales, every color of the rainbow, eight hairy feet, eight eyes to see you with, and 16 claws to clutch you with. Oh, yes, it's carnivorous. It exists entirely on flesh. It has two very sharp fangs filled with venom. You see, it predigests its food before it eats it. First it kills the victim, and then it floods the wound with a secretion. Take him, sir! Oh, Crawford, you don't shut up. No, man, Matt! Matt! It was your idea to stay here, Radigan. Okay, Crawford, okay. You don't want to stay, leave. We don't need you here. Leave, leave huh? It. Leave without a gun. You take the knife. Oh, that's generous of you. I understand the situation. You'd both like to get rid of me, wouldn't you? Yeah. Stop it. Fighting among ourselves won't save anything. Okay, okay. Crawford, you take the end of this rope. When I say pull, you pull. Whether it peep out of you and I swear I'll put a bullet through your brain. <laughs> Why not? She'll be furious when she finds out they've been moved. You got any better ideas how to lure her into the middle of that canvas? Once she's in there, we, we've got her. How fast, Radigan, you have no idea how fast. Something's moving. Over there. Easy. Easy. Seize the eggs. Wait until she, she gets into the middle of the canvas. We gotta get out of here. Wait a minute. It's better if we just leave her like she is for a while. See, get rid of that thing. It'd be a good idea if we all got some sleep. Sleep, we gotta make a run for it. Run, run for it. Where? Anywhere, anywhere. Well, anywhere. You run for it. Don't you realize it before? Stop. Stop.
before it gets dark. Come on now. Going, Matt. I don't know. Anywhere, away from here. We've got enough food in there for and water for about 20 days. The weather holds out on us. We get some luck, we might get to another island. We picked up by a steamer, maybe. Let's go. We have no other choice. It'll be dark in another hour. The tide's coming in. We just can't wait. All alone, running and hiding. Oh, don't think about it. We can't. We just can't. There. That. Remember that? Remember that? Survival.
And as usual, the most dangerous animal in the jungle is man. I mean, what else is new? But apparently, he's also one of the dumbest. Now, I'm no marksman or gun expert, but I don't think you're going to hit anything shooting a gun like that. I mean, do you think throwing the gun forward like that will make the bullets go faster? You know, try aiming. It might work out better for you. <laughs> well, my lords and ladies, I hope you'll join me again next week, dear patrons, as we tour the dark depths of what TV used to be. <laughs> as always, I am Lord Bloodraw saying... Uh, you're always at home in the cathode zone.